we are on the move we are forging ahead uh, with many such programs for the benefit of our participants existing future and others who use our uh, platform our youtube channel etc so it's really heartening and we will definitely try to always try to be available uh, we have committed for this program so we are then uh, there i should have reached my destination i haven't managed to reach i'm sorry about that so let me quickly uh, you know uh, <clears throat> before i give it to sharath let me make a quick uh, joke about it so today is django and uh, for many people django is django unchained all right that is the famous movie that was a uh, popular about couple of years back all right so more than django unchained i would say um, <clears throat> you know django revealed is the more is more appropriate what uh, sharath is going to be doing all right is is unknotted or revealed or something like that which is pretty similar to django unchained so yeah uh, an amazing web framework i am told obviously sharath is the expert i'm uh, just doing the introductions here and uh, especially designed and uh, ease of use just about everything that is what uh, people have spoken about uh, django so yeah over to you sharath uh, before i you know disturb uh, more than traffic noises is disturbing um, that i'll i'll you know let you do that thank you so much sharath thank you so much nitin for your uh, exceptional uh, right work thank you so much that you have taken uh, one step right uh, further to connect with us and uh, right be with us thank you so much that that shows the commitment right so that's that's what we are here friends we basically want you all to upskill to a level where we can uh, very very confidently say that yes these are the skills that i possess and i am ready to take an interview now as part of the series we have been um, dealing with the deployment and uh, we did cover uh, right uh, certain deployment things um we we discussed about um the local deployment um using plask which is the most happening and uh, for me personally i i have used it a lot so a lot so i i feel more confident in plask it's it's kind of a simple readily available templates and majority of the community using that um then we talked about heroku platform which is a very very interesting and readily available platform for deploying deploying the uh, ml models then uh, we also um talked about the github repository we talked about fast api right Th these are uh, some of the platforms that we have talked about now i hope you guys are practicing uh, there are many such uh, platforms which are uh, being made available for the data science community uh, for right uh, easy deploy because as a data scientist you are not just expected to develop a machine learning algorithm but the algorithm has to be uh, scalable it has to be working for new data at the same level that it was working on the historical data so for that we need to come up with the entire framework the crisp mlq workflow that we try to implement in such a way that it is scalable that is after deployment also it continues to do that what what basically is expected by a model and your clients should be able to consume it for certain duration in the future and that's what crisp mlq is all about and that is that is what was lacking in the previous approaches uh, which probably we call it as crisp dm now in order to ensure that we develop and uh, right deploy the solution and monitor and maintain it we need to ensure that continuous training is implemented continuous integration and continuous development that is the key ci cd is the terminology that we talk about for productionizing any solution now as part of this series we basically have tried to learn certain tools right let me just bring up those on the screen once again so we talked about flask we talked about fast api 
we talked about Heroku. We talked about Docker. Till now, right? In the series of three sessions, this is the fourth session. These are the things that we try to explore. The machine learning models that we develop, they are very, very, very strongly depending on the data that we are passing for training. Ultimately, an ML model is trying to explain about the relationship between uh, the factors that we have in our data. Saying that, in order to deploy, right? I, I've specifically written these two separately. In order to ensure that we deploy a solution, now, what, what does a deployment actually mean? Think, I, I'll give you a five seconds pause. When we say deploy an application, an ML app, what does that actually mean? Right? So deploying basically means whatever the code, I'll suppose, I'll assume that we are creating a Python code. It could be a dot I, uh, .py or I pynb file, right? The, these two files, standard files that we use for generating your machine learning code. So this code has to be used in businesses. Now, we are not going to use it, right? As a data scientist, I'll be developing the application. But ultimately, that application has to be used by the client and probably their customers, a business and their customers. Now, we do not expect the customers to use a code. And this code has to be readily working always for the business, right? So hence, we need a front end. In the back end, you could have a database, you could have right whatever the data source that we have. But the ML engine should basically project an interface for the end users, which can allow them to very easily use that functionality. An ML app, when we say it gives us some functionality, right? So end users should be able to use that functionality. For that, we need a front end. Now, generally, when we say a front end, This is the architecture. Let me just uh, again bring it up. So as an end user, the end user would probably would like to have a kind of a right HTML front end. And this is your front end. This is our customer. My handwriting is poor, please bear with me that, on that. For an end user, it does not matter what applications or what software we are using, isn't it? They will feed in their input and they need results, that's all. So for creating this HTML, we, we are assuming that we are going to create a very simple HTML view HTML pages. For creating this HTML web pages, frameworks are used. We are using Python. So it allows us to create these frameworks. As part of this web frameworks, we used last, my favorite, fast API, which is specifically designed for your ML uh, related applications. And it is Consider to be super fast, it is growing. But these are also considered to be very small. In fact, Flask has another name called as micro web framework, right? So it's, these are very, very small frameworks and they are readily containing a lot of templates. Uh, uh, a lot of things are um, easily made available for us. Everything is pre return kind of a thing. But if you need more customization, if you want to have a very large application you want to develop, then you need a full stack 
web framework right and the third framework that we are going to cover now is called as django this is the third framework right so we will be talking about this django today and we'll understand how we can generate a html view for our machine learning models post that once your machine learning code and your print end right web framework api are ready this becomes our entire code right this this has the best ml model and top of that we will create the web framework together everything can be um right deposited into a code repository there itself you can try and update your code and right um a centralized hub where all the people contribute in developing our application so we might have uh, data analysts we might have data scientists we might have specific uh, forecasting team or machine learning experts data cleaning team uh, the web ui development team so there may be multiple team members who are developing each of the branch that is required for our entire application to work without any issues so we will have this centralized location where all the team members are projecting the or updating the work hence it's it becomes your code repository centralized hub once your code is ready then from here you will be able to deploy that on either your local on site a uh, local uh, post or on premise um, server or you can use any of your cloud based platforms this is uh, basically um, we have tried on local host and this is heroku we will be covering other platforms also as part of the series of this um, um, discussions that we are going to have we will be covering a lot of other tools streamlit is one such tool i getting a lot of requests for that we will have that session in the next uh, weekend over the next weekend streamlit would be something that we will be targeting next and post that we also have cloud platforms like azure aws gcp the most popular cloud platforms so we are going to try and deposit all this code on a server so that it creates an end point which can be used by the end users all right so that is the entire overview if you are not clear on what does model deployment means this is what we are trying to do so we have code we have web framework related code which basically gives you a, a html view together all these things are basically pushed on to your end server right which basically is used to host the final software that would give us the uh, end point right of uh, the api which can allow us to connect with the ml code and then we will be able to use the functionality of your uh, model now let me talk about django so django basically is nothing but uh open source i should probably start with this django is a free open source library which is written in python and it is called as a high level python web framework and it's called as a full stack web framework as well and it allows us to develop very neat apis i mean html uh, templates and all that using those templates we will be able to create a uh, very nice views for your code it basically works as a back end server side web framework and uh, right the rest framework basically allows us to create the endpoints whatever is your functionality for your machine learning models we try to create that endpoints for that right and especially when you have a very large applications which also has a database connectivity authentications 
these kind of complexity comes, user validations and all that, right? So in such cases, having Django would be preferred. All these three that we speak about the frameworks, Django, then we talk about Flask, then we talk about Fast API. These are the popular three Python web frameworks, which allow us to develop the HTML templates or HTML pages, you can say. Each one of it has its own advantages and disadvantages, right? Now we need to uh, try and learn the concepts of uh, Django. So Django, what is Django? Django is simply a Python library, which is written in Python, which allows us to generate a REST framework, right? Uh, basically an endpoint, HTML view for the code. Django is set to contain MVT design pattern. What does M, V, and T mean? M means model. V means view, T means template. What does these MVT actually mean? So if you talk about MVT, M stands for model, right? Now, what does this model mean? Model basically is trying to give data to the end users, I mean, to the models basically, right? So when we talk about model, it allows us Right, it, it basically allows us to deliver or provide data. That's important. All right, so model nothing but it, it provides us data. The data generally, when we speak about data, uh, the data sources could be anything. So when your model has to connect, when, when your HTML APIs and all those things will have to connect, your application has to connect to database. There would be uh, integrations, right? From the front end to back end. There could be a lot of complexities with respect to that and different tools could be there, different programming languages could be there. So interaction becomes difficult. Now Django, right? Is using something called as ORM, Object Relational Mapping. And this is a technique which enables the users to write whatever the connectivity code that is required without using complex SQL statements or any other statements that we basically require. Any language that is required for connectivity to your data sources, right? It, it helps the users to very easily get the connectivity of the data. That's the logic. Now, there are certain standard files that we have, all right? That files are uh, basically templatized. So when you want to generate Django application, there will be some standard files that are created. We will be discussing about those files also. The data related, right, the models that we are speaking about, the file which is used to design or define these models or data sources is models.py. This is standard file. So as soon as you generate, you define your application, the standard template files are available. We'll take these files and then make changes. So if you want to connect with databases, this is the file that we use. There, there are certain questions. I think there's some lag uh, in the, uh, the sessions. Uh, pretty. Um, simple uh, solution, I mean, simple uh, answer to the question. The question is, can we deploy over Docker also? Now, as I explained to you all, let me put it again. When you are trying to deploy, we will be deploying ML code, but you cannot just give an ML code. So what you do, you give HTML pages. So this is the code which is written so that you give a UI front end to the users. This entire code will be placed in a server. 
this server can be a local server, can be a cloud server. The cloud, the Docker basically is nothing but a containerization concept. Sir. It creates a container. This containers can run on local, these containers can run on cloud as well. So to answer your question, yes. It can also be implemented on Docker. Next, moving on. So models is something that we discussed. Now let's move on to view. A view is basically nothing but the front end. It is basically your code as, as you can see, right? It's, it's nothing but view is nothing but the code which allows us to design how the UI should look like, right? Very simple, you write your code. In, in Flask, we used app.py if you remember, which contains all the uh, content, the code that, that is required and it redirects to HTML, isn't it? View is exactly that code in Django. So you write your basic UI related uh, code, your, your actual code, which basically redirects or pulls the HTML code from templates code. So this is where you write views.py is the file which you use to write your code and this basically is nothing but takes your HTTP request. Um, I mean, this is uh, where you get the return, but in order to get the result, right, return result, you need to also pass the input. So you're basically creating that function logic, which says in this page, you're passing input. These are the various arguments that I read in. This is the backend model that I'm going to use. And this is the result that I'm getting. And that result will be again passed back to the user in a UI. So this is the logic that you're going to write with respect to your entire code. So this is what an end user will experience, right? But when you say, hey, this is the result that I you're getting, or there is some input that you're going to read, user has to pass the input, right? So you need to give the UI by connecting the code to templates. Template is basically nothing but a folder which contains the HTML files. In Flask, we use the same standard. We will have templates folder itself. Simple. So we'll have templates folder. We will pass the code, the index.html or home.html, whatever name you want to get, or the results.html. And you design the layout, HTML layout. And these HTML layouts can be, be anything. And there are a lot of readily available templates. You can, in fact, use the same HTML code, the files that you have used in Flask in Django as well. Same HTML codes can be used. There's, there's no difference to the HTML part. So we will create a folder called templates. And within the templates, we will have our HTML. Right, and we also have the standard templates. And in Django, in Django the additional benefit that we have is it allows us to add tags, Django tags. This is a additional benefit, of course, something that you can take. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll simply take the HTML files that I have created for my machine learning model in the previous sessions that I've displayed, Flask code, for example, I'll take the same files. So it becomes very easy, right? HTML part is very easy folks, don't worry on that. Now, how do we install? 
Installation is very simple. For installing Django application, we will simply say pip install Django. That's all. Remember, it is a Python's web framework library. It's, it's as simple as you simply say pip install. That's all. Now, what happens is once this command is created, I mean, once the pip install is done, you import Django and then you can start running your programs. But when you do, you need to ensure that you are in a directory where all your code files are there. Okay, so that, that also something that we will see. We will need to initialize the application by saying this. All right, Django admin, start project, project, whatever the project name that you want to give. And this will ensure that you get all the template files that are required. So this is going to create a folder with this name. This becomes your root directory. And within the root directory, these are all the files. That are. So this is the parent directory, or you can say this is the root directory. And within this directory, you will have manage.py and a folder with the app name that you have given. Within the app, you will have these different files. Views.api, uh, views.py will also be there. That is something which is um, we create for customized functionalities. We add that. File. But these are the default files which we get. Now, what does each, each of these files mean? Let's try and understand. The first folder at the high level is basically our root directory. And uh, this is basically your uh, container. You can say it is like your project. Needs. Okay. Main directory. Within the directory, we have two entities created. The first file is manage.py. And this file is very important for us to understand. So manage.py is basically a file. Uh, you can say it is a command line utility, which allows us to interact with the Django project that we are trying to create. This is like your, uh, um, I should say, connection. Right. This is where you are connecting to your Django project. Next. We have another file which is created within this main directory. Right. Now, this is the folder name. So you, you'll have the app name, yeah, which is generally the same name as the root directory. So this file, uh, sorry, this folder is containing all the files, templates that, that are required. Basically, everything is there inside this folder. Every Django project that we are generating or creating is a Python package, right? It, it becomes like a Python package for us. All right. Now, in this Python package, we will have all the required files. The first file is init.py. We have seen this, right? Init.py. Now in init.py, uh, it's basically an empty file. It has nothing. Okay. In the init.py file, you'll have empty content, but this is going to define that particular folder as a package. It, it basically considers a Python package if you have that initialization file. Next, we will have the settings.py and uh, all the settings that basically we want to do will be done in the settings.py file. Settings. Any configurations that you want to customize that we want, right? Customization that we want will be done in the settings.py file. Next. 
urls.py. This is another interesting file that we will have. URL declarations, any URLs that you want to um, basically try and connect. So you will have uh, the urls.py, uh, I mean, standard file. Within this file, you can give the URLs. URLs could be your entire folder structure. Also. Then comes uh, your ASGI file and WSGI file. ASGI stands for Asynchronous Server Gateway Interface. WSGI contains uh, or is called as Web Server Gateway Interface. Flask works on WSGI interface, okay, the standards. When, when we are trying to work with the web frameworks, they need to have connectivity, right? They work as an API, isn't it? So um, web frameworks were basically, um, web server was used initially, Flask also works on WSGI, but it has certain challenges. So ASGA comes into picture. It, it is running in an asynchronous way. Asynchronous means it, it also waits for getting connectivity. It can have parallel connections and all those things are there. There, there are benefits with respect to this uh, gateway interface. Uh, we're not discussing about these two anyways. We're not going in details of that. But Django can handle both the standards, ASGA standard or WSGA standards. Right? So that is the benefit for this. Then we also have, as I said, views.py file, right? Yeah, so views.py file is a very important file which basically have all the content that is written. But it is not readily available. It is not given ready. Okay. You will have to construct that. I will show what will be there in the views.py file also. So basically, whatever the web pages that we are uh, constructing, right, is, is basically connected to this. So your HTML pages will be connected to views. And this logic or code will define the entire flow of your uh, user experience you get, right? And um, as I said, it, it takes the inputs. We will have the code written in such a way that it reads the inputs. It connects to the ML engine, for example, in our case, the application, gets the processed results and returns that result on HTTP or HTTPS um, interface. This is where your right, uh, data flows. So views.py, that's the file that we need to actually work. Then this is, uh, so this is basically what happens. So Django works on 8000 um, as a standard uh, template, a uh, port. This is for your local host. And this is the port. You can basically, if you are using Heroku, then you'll have the standard template. Uh, sorry, standard application name there, dot Heroku dot. But if I'm deploying it on local host, this is basically the user. So when you execute your Django application, it gives the URL, right? And when you launch the URL, it goes to this urls.py file, and then it calls the view, right? It, it understands what is the um, logic. In your views.py, you have defined the flow, right? So it connects to that particular view, which is available in views.py file. And here, I mean, we'll take input here over HTTP. Thanks to URLs, it connects to us, um, locates us to the views.py file. This view, views.py file will have all the details, including once the input has come in, what is the ML engine that we need to work, work with? You can say this is nothing but your uh, saved model, saved ML 
model. Uh, you could uh, save the model in particular or job file, uh, sorry, job lib. Either way, it, it, it takes those uh, saved models. We're, you're going to define those saved models here. Right, and uh, these um, relevant models will also take the data if required, and that is it defined in models. .view. The view then basically routes, right? The views dot py file has the uh, uh, the HTML view also, right? So it re redirects to HT uh, templates folder where you probably will have the UI. And uh, the template folder contains the HTML and uh, code basically. And this finished HTML is shown on the browser, the web browser that, that you basically have. So when you're launching the URL on the browser, this is the flow that happens and the user will be able to experience the UI HTML view on the browser. In the backend, this is the flow that happens. So URLs, views, models, template, Within the templates, you'll have .html files. So these are the sequence of actions that are happening in the uh, Django framework in the back. These are the sequence of steps that we will have to perform. Now let us try and do these sequence of steps. The first thing is you'll have to run through your machine learning model ensure that the best model is saved. So we are, we are basically creating the pipeline, right? We are loading the data set. We are trying to define our machine learning model. And in order to ensure that we use the best model, we are creating pipelines and saving the model, the best model using one of these Libraries, either pickle or job. Then we have to initialize our Django project. Along with the saved models, we are now going to wrap the saved model with our Django project, Django code. To start with, we have to execute the start project in the uh, command prompt. Okay, so the command prompt. Now, once we have this executed, there will be a folder which will be created. And within the folder, as we discussed, there will be a subfolder created project name, whatever the application that you are calling it. And then you will have manage.py. So let us try and run this. And then we will see uh, right what all files it creates and basically how to handle all these uh, different files. All right. So let me open, let me open our Anaconda prompt. Okay, so I'm currently in my uh, home directory. I will go to any specific folder which can be used for um, our uh, code. I have saved my code here, fuel efficiency. So I'll, I'll do one thing, I'll use this particular folder. I have the um, Python code already, I, I, I was, not showing that, but if you want, you can see this. This is the same code that we have discussed in our previous sessions. You can see the all the default libraries are imported here. So, yeah. Then we are um, trying to connect to the database, pull the required data. This is our uh, sample code, so sample data. And then we are trying to do all the EDA, perform all the EDA. Um, we are also looking at the categorical data here. Then we are trying to do one hot encoding on the categorical data. This is a pipeline that we are defining for performing one hot encoding. 
uh, we are saving that as ordinal encode using joblet function. And then we also are trying to build multiple linear regression here. And then we are trying to save that multiple linear regression model. So this is the prediction that we are doing. And here we are saving that multiple linear regression that we have defined here, right? The saved model, I'm trying to use this pickle file. So I've basically shown you both joblib as well as pickle. You can stick to one library. You don't need to use both. I, I could save the model using uh, Joblib as well. So we have uh, two saved applications. One is uh, the the um, transformer, one hot encoding. The other one is our machine learning. Once we have the models, we will be able to use those models and try and do the prediction. All right. So once I did this saving. So once I execute this, we will be getting the saved models. Uh, I also have the saved models here. You can see the saved models. And I'm not running that once again. These are the two files that we are interested in. Okay. So let me also, right? this is not required. This is basically, if I use joblet, then I'll get this one. If I use pickle, then I get encoder.pkl. Just for demonstration, I have used both of them, but for our discussion, th these are not required. All right. So we have all the files in place here. Okay. Let me uh, try and, as I said, I'll be using this particular folder. I'll say CD, this one. I'm entered into this folder. I will use this for demonstration purpose, right? So basic code, how, how was the basic project initialized? So I will use the code here, which is given on the screen. Django hyphen admin start project, you can say, Project test one. I'm testing the project, right? So there will be a folder created fuel efficiency MLR folder. So this is my folder here. You can see project underscore test one is not there. We are going to create that. So I executed this line of code. Now you can see that this folder is created within this folder. You can see the two contents, the two entities. One is the manage.py file, and there is a folder with the same name. So within the folder, you will have init.py, asga.py, wsgi.py, settings.py, urls.py. Okay. This is a very simple, um, basic code, a uh, simple first project that you can define. Um, there's nothing, no functionality yet. So we, we have seen, right, all these content has created. Now, in order to execute this library or this particular code, we need to enter into the folder. So we are in fuel efficiency.mlr folder, right? So we are outside this. We need to enter into project underscore test one where I have manage.py file. So I'll say cd project dot underscore test one. You can see there are the two contents manage.py project underscore test. Now I will type Python and executing this script dot slash manage.py file. When I execute this, it gives me the URL. By default, it takes the port number 8000. So here I will be opening a new Chrome file. I will launch the URL 
and you can see it says the install worked successfully congratulations that means the django installation is also successful please visit the youtube channel you can also um, connect with us you can also view the content in the blogs we will be sharing the link of the blog in the chat so that you can refer to the content that is there in the presentation. Um, all the steps will be available there and you can follow the, the uh, instructions in the uh, from the blog. Uh, we, will, we will communicate through the um, right, uh, chat message. All right. So this is a, a, a simple uh, right first application that you you can launch. Okay, I'll, I'll close this. This is not required. We will come out of this. You can say Control C to come out of this particular application. So let us uh, now talk about the actual project. Okay, and I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about Django and deployment. Django deployment. So you can see <clears throat> under the Django deployment, I have manage.py. This is standard file which got created. I have personal. The application name was personal. I have the saved models. And DB SQLite 3 is something which is created by Django for connectivity. This is optional because we are not passing to any um, data here, right? So it, it basically takes in. Uh, empty content, but by by default models will create uh, the SQLite database for connectivity purpose. Then, if I look at the templates folder, this is the same template that we have used in our Flask uh, example as well. So it contains um, the a title which is basically at the top. Then we will have um, scroll scrolling text. We will also have a logo of Inodata text being projected there, and the page contains a title um, in red color. And then we have the engine um, type, which is a categorical data. So we are asking the user to give one of the four options that it can accept. Right, five options: petrol, hybrid, diesel. LPG and CNG. So these are the only five options that we have. Right. Next, we will have the uh, right uh, after the input, we basically take this is the categorical data. These are the numeric data with ranges. Once we submit, it goes to the um, views dot page. Okay, in views dot PY, it, it, the entire flow is defined, but this is only the HTML. So we will have a submit button. When you click on that, you'll get the result on the same page. You can define multiple pages also, your wish. This is the standard template that I'm using. You'll have to create this folder, templates folder, and put your file there. Now, if I go into this personal uh, file, uh, I mean, this, this application, you can see here, I have all the standard files. Views.py is something that we will have to talk. This is a file that we will create. And you can see it is just like your Flask code, app.py code. So we are going to use Django shortcuts to render the HTML. We are using Joblib and Pickle so that it can understand the saved models. Um, the machine learning algorithm was done using Pickle for uh, Pickle. Um, file, pickle library, and the one hot encoder was done using joblib, right? So we are, we are basically passing these two. Then inputs, we are requesting the inputs and taking the input. This is a string engine type. These are all the integer format files that we are reading in. And we are basically printing this. Here we are doing the prediction by taking the transformed, uh, right? Um, result and m dot 
predict is basically we are doing ok dot transform is for one hot encoding and then we are doing the prediction here and that predictions will be printed that predictions are again returned back to your index dot html only so this is very similar to your flask application the logic that we will have to it's a python code only So what exactly is happening here, right? So if I have to talk about this, so we will go into the settings.py file. This is one step that we need to do, settings.py file. Here, there is one standard step that we need to follow. You can register your application by giving the name also here in installed apps. But um, right, that is not required. By default, the DIRS will not contain anything within the brackets. We need to add templates because that is where the templates have to be picked up from. So settings basically says that you need to get your data from this particular location. Okay, we are directing the application to look into this folder. That's one change that we have to do. If I have to show you the same file, let me close this. I will go to the previous empty project that we have created and let me show you the settings file. here. You can see this is how it will be by default given, but you will basically say templates. But remember this templates, is a string, it has to be in quotes, and there should be this folder. This is directory basically. DIRS is nothing but directories. So you are basically redirecting your Django project to look into the templates folder. Okay, so that is the first step that we do in settings.py. Then you also have to load the saved models. So in the current, I mean, your parent directory, root directory, you're going to give these two files. Okay, these two files. And then you'll have the templates folders, right? All these things have to be created in the main directory itself. Next is the urls.py. The urls.py, Let us go to the urls.py. We need to add the URL patterns. So we are basically redirecting the um, entire application to look into these content. Okay, so admin, this is the main um, standard. This, this will be there by default. It's by default given. We are adding these two lines. So we're basically adding the path of the entire URLs. Where, where does your results uh, be placed to it, right? I mean, these are your standard URL standards. Uh, in Flask, we basically have slash root, slash home, slash results, those things, right? So that is the path that we are talking about. This is the home. From home, it has to redirect to the result. Okay, these URLs we will have to add. By default, it will be given. Under this site URLs, we are adding these two files. Then views.py file, I've shown you that file. We have to add that content. And all these things will be there in the main parent directory, root directory. From here, you will run this particular line of code. Okay, so again, we will have to go to the root directory. So I'll, I'll take this content and I will have to go into the main folder. So my, my, my folder is, it's not, what is the folder directory? So, okay, personal is the application. So I have Django underscore deployment. This is the application that we are 
creating. That's the main folder, right? The root directory can be anything, friends. You can also rename this. But within the root directory, you will have the name of the application. Okay. So here I will run our server by initializing the manage.py. That's all. So it gives us the URL. Save it. Open it in a new browser. Voila. So you get the model deployed using the Django framework in the backend. As an end user, this is what you will see. So you can pass your input. I'll say diesel. I'll pass 50. The ranges are also given so that the end user should not give the values outside the range. So I'm going to pass these values and I'll say submit. When I click on the submit, it, it takes the results and the results are published on this particular page. You can see URL, right? This is what we have given in our urls.py. So it is redirecting to that particular page. That's all. So this is how we can deploy the ML model using a web framework. Now, whatever code that we have, the best content, right? The entire content should be there on our GitHub repository. And once it is there in GitHub repository, you will be able to connect to Heroku and then deploy the entire application on Heroku as well. I would love to uh, explain the process, but again, uh, we are lacking on time. But you can refer to the previous videos where we have seen how an ML model is deployed on Heroku to refer to how it can be moved into uh, the Heroku cloud as well. Um, there might be a couple of steps that might be different. But yes, in order to do that, we can refer you people can refer to the blog which we are going to publish. And using that blog, you can a blog you can try and uh, practice on how to deploy a Django framework, a uh, Django based ML model on your Heroku account. So this is friends, the Django framework. So we discussed about the three most popular web frameworks in Python till now. Once again, just to remind you all, we talked about Flask, we talked about Fast API, we talked about Django in today's session. These are the most three popular web framework APIs, right? Libraries which allow us to create web framework APIs. And these are based on the most happening programming language, Python. The next upcoming session, the weekend, we will be talking about Streamlit. And you'll understand how Streamlit is basically different from the entire process that we have done till now. So Streamlit is like an end-to-end -end tool. You don't need to really write any code and all that. Your ML model can be very readily pushed into the Streamlit account. It probably takes 15 minutes to do everything. You don't need to write HTML at all. Right? So there are readily available. It's like an application which is helping you to avoid all the coding. How to configure, what are various things that are required. We will be discussing that in our next session. And uh, keep adding your views like, comment, share the videos so that others also take the advantage of the sessions. Hope you learn how to master the web frameworks, which are becoming very essential for a data scientist to crack the interviews. And uh, good luck, friends. Hope you enjoyed the session. Stay safe and uh, until we connect, stay safe and uh, enjoy your life. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you so much, Sharad. Thank you, as always, a simply amazing session. And um, who says that, um, you know, experts can't be teachers and teachers can't be experts. You have proved uh, everyone wrong. So you are an expert in the work that you do and you are an amazing teacher. You tell 
you know, you tell it in a very nice way. Thank you so much. It was quite, um, uh, as far as informative, as quite, enter, you know, entertaining as well. Uh, looking forward to more sessions. And friends, like Sharad said in the end, please spread the word. Uh, get more subscribers and, uh, you know, make us uh, somebody worthy, make us popular. It's, it's with you. And uh, on that note, thank you so much. Adios.